Welcome to a screencast on an introduction to electromagnetic energy. Electromagnetic energy or electromagnetic waves are what the name sounds like they would be. They are oscillations or waves that travel through space. They have peaks and troughs. Uh, they have a sinusoidal shape and they consist of both an electric component and a magnetic component or an electric and a magnetic field that are at right angles to each other and these oscillations, these waves travel through space and through materials at very high speed. Now for simplicity we often only show one component of the electromagnetic wave, so let's say the uh, electric field component, and in general electromagnetic waves are characterized by several aspects or parts. They have a height of the peaks and troughs, which we call an amplitude, symbolized by A. They have a length or distance between one peak and the next peak, or it's also the distance between one trough and the next trough, or the same part of any one of these repetitive oscillations to the same location on the next oscillation. That's called the wavelength, and it's symbolized by the Greek letter lambda. They have a frequency, which is how many oscillations pass by a given location in a certain amount of time. That's symbolized by the Greek letter nu. It looks kind of like a V, but it's the Greek letter nu. And then they have a speed at which they travel. And in vacuum, the speed of light is 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And we symbolize that by C. And the relationship between the wavelength, frequency, and speed of electromagnetic waves is as shown. The wavelength times the frequency is equal to this constant value, the speed of light. And note that what that means is that the wavelength and the frequency are inversely related to each other. If the wavelength is larger, the frequency would be smaller. If the wavelength is smaller, the frequency would be larger to maintain a constant uh, product of the speed of light. Now let's look at frequency just a little bit more. Uh, frequency is how many oscillations go past a given location, like this mad scientist here, in let's say a second, some amount of time. So we have a wave go by and we count the oscillations. What are the Oh, that was pretty fast. So let's slow it down a little bit so we can get the idea. And here's a wave coming by. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six oscillations went by in that amount of time. And normally we count how many oscillations go by per second. Now a couple other things about electromagnetic waves. Uh, electromagnetic waves consist of what are called photons, which we can think of as kind of chunks or particles of electromagnetic radiation or electromagnetic waves. Uh, we often call them wave packets. And here is a wave packet. It's a number of repetitions or cycles of the wave, but it's uh, discrete. It's not continuous. It's some number of oscillations, but it has kind of a start and a finish. And here is a representation of a photon of red light and a photon of purple light. And notice that the red light photon has a longer wavelength than the purple light photon. And that would mean that the red uh, light has a lower frequency and the purple light has a higher frequency. And the photon is going to carry some energy and the amount of energy a given photon carries or contains is given by this relationship. Energy of a photon is equal to h times nu, where h is Planck's constant, which has a value of 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds, and nu is frequency, which we've seen before. Uh, notice here this is joule seconds, as in joules time seconds, it's not joules per second. Now, electromagnetic waves, there's a large, large continuum of types of electromagnetic waves ranging from high energy gamma radiation through x-rays, ultraviolet, infrared, visible light, microwave, uh, and on up through uh, radio waves. And 
in the way this chart is set up, the gamma rays and x-rays on the left are very short wavelength high energy and the wavelength gets gradually longer as we go across to very uh, long wavelength um, low frequency low energy radio waves. And then of course even though visible light makes up only a small piece of the electromagnetic uh, continuum or spectrum uh, it's very important to us because that's what we use, uh, that's what we're able to see. Um, as noted, this chart goes from very short wavelength on the left to very long wavelength on the right. So we have increasing wavelength going from left to right. And what that means is we have increasing frequency going from right to left and also increasing energy going from right to left. So at this end, the right side of this uh, electromagnetic spectrum, things like radio waves have long wavelength, low or small frequency, and low energy. At this end, the gamma ray end, we have short wavelength, high frequency, and high energy. Now let's do a couple examples involving calculations with electromagnetic waves using the uh, equations that we've been introduced to. And first of all, we have an example where we have some very bright green laser light with a wavelength of 532 nanometers, and we'd like to know the frequency of this laser light. Well, we of course have been introduced to the relationship between wavelength and frequency. Wavelength times frequency equals speed of light. So if we know the wavelength, and speed of light is a known value, which is a constant, then we can calculate the frequency by solving this equation for frequency. Frequency equals speed of light over wavelength, or C over lambda. And then plugging in values. 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second is speed of light. And then we like to get unit agreement, so instead of using wavelength in nanometers, we're going to use wavelength in meters, and since a nanometer is a billionth or 10 to the minus ninth of a meter, then 532 nanometers is 532 times 10 to the minus ninth meters. And that allows us to cancel the units of meters. And when we perform our calculation, we get 5.64 times 10 to the 14th per second as our answer. Now, per second uh, refers to number of oscillations of this uh, green laser light wave per second, and per second is also a unit known as hertz. So we can also report this as 5.64 times 10 to the 14th hertz for the frequency of this green laser light. Okay, another example. Your favorite radio station uses electromagnetic ray waves. Well, if you're listening to a public radio station, maybe it's 89.7 megahertz. And the question is, what's the wavelength of these radio waves? Well, we know the relationship between wavelength and frequency. This time, we know the frequency, and we'd like to find the wavelength. So again, we solve, this time for wavelength. Wavelength is speed of light over frequency or C over nu. And again, we plug in our values, 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second for speed of light. And then mega is million, so 89.7 megahertz is 89.7 million hertz or million cycles per second, or 89.7 times 10 to the sixth per second. Units of per second cancel. And when we perform our calculation, we get 3.34 meters for the wavelength of this radio station's uh, waves. Now, a couple other examples involving energy. And first of all, what's the energy of a photon of this green laser light that we did in the first example? Well, what we know is that the wavelength of this green laser light is 532 nanometers. And we've, in a previous example, determined the frequency of 5.64 times 10 to the 14th hertz. So we can now use the relationship of energy of a photon equals Planck's constant times frequency of the photons. And that 
putting in the values is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds for Planck's constant. Frequency is 5.64 times 10 to the 14th per second. Per second cancels. And that gives us 3.74 times 10 to the negative 19th joules for the energy of one photon of green laser light. Now note that's a pretty small value, but typically when this uh, toy is, or when green laser light is being emitted, we're going to have lots and lots and lots of photons. And so cumulatively, it can be a significant amount of energy, even though an individual photon does not contain uh, too much energy just by itself. Well, one more example. What's the energy of a photon of your favorite radio station's emissions? And this time we're going to go with an oldie station that has a different wavelength than the previous uh, radio station that we looked at. This has a wavelength of 2.85 meters. Now, to get energy, we're going to take Planck's constant and multiply it by the frequency. But notice, we don't have the frequency, we have the wavelength. But that's okay, because we know how wavelength and frequency are related. So we could use this equation, solve for frequency, and then use the frequency value and plug it into the energy equation and do two steps uh, and determine the energy. But we could also combine the equations and note that the frequency is equal to the speed of light over the wavelength from solving this relationship for frequency. And then we can substitute in C over lambda for frequency in this equation. So we'll have E times H, oh, sorry, E equals H times instead of nu, we'll have H times C over lambda. And so now we have one equation that allows us to solve for the thing we want, energy of the photon, in one step. Uh, Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds. Speed of light, 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Wavelength of this particular uh, electromagnetic wave, 2.85 meters. And notice that seconds and meters will cancel leaving us with 6.96, sorry, 6.97 times 10 to the minus 26 joules for the energy of one photon of this radio station's uh, waves. And note if we compare that to the green laser light, which was about uh, something times 10 to the minus 19th joules, this is an even smaller amount of energy per photon by quite a bit. And that's it for an introduction to electromagnetic energy and electromagnetic waves.